featuring the awesome new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 50 series graphics cards are now available to pre-order. And to help you identify which GPU is right for you, in this video we'll take a look at the launch lineup plus the key features of the 50 series for gamers and content creators. Now the first three laptop series GPUs out of the gate are the ultra high-end 5090, the high-end 5080 and the mid-range 5070 Ti. There's also a lower spec 5070 plan but it will launch a little later. All 50 series GPUs are designed to accelerate frame rates through generating entirely new frames via DLSS 4, more on this later. And this means that the specs are not, on paper at least, hugely impressive, with for example the 5090 only having 8% more cores than the 4090. It does however have a lot more memory, 24GB versus 16GB. And it's a similar story with the 5080 and 5070 Ti too, although the latter is still stuck with the same 8GB of memory that 70 level GPUs have been at for several generations. Don't forget also that like other NVIDIA laptop GPUs, the 50 series have configurable TDPs. And that means that laptop manufacturers are free to choose what clock speed to run the GPU at. For instance, the 5090 can run at anywhere between 95 and 150 watts, so do make sure to check the specs of your laptop carefully. After all, a 150 watt 5090 will be much faster than a 95 watt version, albeit at the cost of higher power consumption, which will have an impact on battery life, size and weight, all things to consider. As already mentioned, Blackwell-based 50 series GPUs are centered around AI-generated rendering known as neural rendering. Now, whilst neural rendering itself isn't new, it was actually first employed to upscale games using DLSS 1 in the Turing-based 20 series GPUs, Blackwell-based 50 series GPUs introduce neural shaders, fundamentally changing how games are rendered. And this is potentially as big a deal for gaming as the switch from a fixed function pipeline to programmable shaders was in GeForce 3 GPUs way back in 2001. The most noticeable change is that in addition to upscaling, the neural shaders in 50 series GPUs use pre-trained transformer models to create entirely new frames, essentially filling in the blanks between rasterized frames, accelerating the frame rates well beyond what the CUDA cores and RT cores could achieve alone. The neural shaders enable the new DLSS 4 to generate three frames for every rendered frame, a process known as multi-frame generation. Combined with upscaling the original frame, in effect 15 out of 16 pixels is generated rather than rendered. Nvidia claims the combination of these techniques boosts frame rates by up to eight times. A side benefit of this move to neural rendering is reduced memory usage, freeing up this valuable resource for more complex game worlds. As already mentioned, DLSS 4 uses transformer-based models to generate entirely new frames with improved ray reconstruction. These are a type of neural network that learn context and relationships between sequence components to transform an input sequence into an output sequence and needs to be pre-trained on a massive AI supercomputer at NVIDIA. This boosts both performance and image quality over previous iterations of DLSS, which use more primitive CNN-based models, reducing noise and ghosting around objects. DLSS 4 with multi-frame generation is already supported by 75 games and applications, including big hitters such as Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and Star Wars Outlaws, with more to follow, no doubt. And if DLSS 4 isn't to your liking, it's entirely optional and can be enabled and disabled at will in the NVIDIA app in Windows. In terms of image quality, we found that the new transformer-based model generates far better looking frames and movement than the previous CNN model. The latter is particularly important, as whilst DLSS 3 was pretty good at upscaling, fast-moving objects quite often suffered from a fair amount of ghosting. As if fundamentally changing how games are rendered wasn't enough, 50 series also features Reflex 2 to drive down latency. The original Reflex achieved this by synchronizing the CPU and the GPU, boosting responsiveness and aiming accuracy in first-person shooters. 
Reflex 2 adds a technique called Frame Warp that captures mouse movements after the frame has been rendered. The original frame is then shifted according to this movement and re-rendered by AI accordingly, giving a more accurate visual of where your mouse is moving. Reflex 2 will be available soon on all RTX GPUs, but will be supported first by 50 series GPUs in games such as the Finals and Valorant. 50 series laptops also have lots of new useful capabilities for content creators too, including new and improved video encoders and decoders with native support for 422 Chroma sampled video, in addition to the existing 444 and 420 standards. 422 provides higher image quality than 420, providing double the color information, helpful for maintaining fine details and text, yet still a far smaller file size than 444. The new 9th gen video encoder also improves quality for AV1 and HEVC by 5% and adds a new optional ultra high quality mode. There are more of these encoders too, boosting export speed over 50% gen on gen. 50 series GPUs, in particular the 5090 with its large 24 gigabytes of memory, are also powerhouses when it comes to 3D rendering. Not only in that the renders will take less time to complete, but the frame rate in DCC applications will be much faster thanks to GPUs generating entirely new frames using DLSS 4. The display engine in 50 series GPUs has also been improved, adding in support for DisplayPort 2.1b compared to version 1.1 in older GPUs. This provides up to 80 gigabits per second of bandwidth, enabling even higher refresh rates at high resolutions, such as 165Hz at 8K and 480Hz at 4K. Generative AI models such as Stable Diffusion and Flux One are increasingly being used for both image and video creation. Blackwell-based 50 series GPUs speed up this compute-intensive process by being able to run generative AI models at FP4 precision natively. In contrast, previous generation Ada Lovelace-based 40 series GPUs can only run FP4 models at FP8. Now, whilst an FP4 quantization model is inherently less accurate than an FP16 model, they can be processed far faster and they require less memory. So they're a welcome extra tool in the box for content creators. For instance, a less detailed FP4 generated image might be fine for use on social media, but a more detailed FP16 generated image will be required for a commercial presentation, even though it takes longer to generate. The popular live streaming application and video broadcast is also getting two new features to coincide with the 50 series launch. These will initially be released in beta and unlike most broadcast features, use compute intensive AI models so they're not intended to be used whilst gaming, instead being better suited to podcasts and video conferences. The first new feature is Virtual Key Lights, which uses AI to relight your face as if you had two key lights in your studio, reducing the shadows created by uneven lighting. And the second new addition is Studio Voice, which improves sound quality by running your voice samples through an AI model trained in a high-end studio. In addition, NVIDIA has also collaborated with Logitech and in-world AI to create Streamlabs Intelligent Streaming Assistant. This AI agent joins you on your live stream, answering questions in the chat. It can even start conversations during quiet periods and can help you produce streams, switching to the most relevant scenes and playing audio and video cues during interesting gameplay moments. Plus, it can even help configure streams and troubleshoot technical issues. As GeForce GPUs, these new 50 series laptops are NVIDIA Studio certified. NVIDIA Studio is a suite of specialized drivers, enhanced applications and tools that transform performance in graphics and video workflows. At the heart of the experience is the Studio driver, which includes two modes. In Studio mode, the driver ensures a smooth and consistent user experience in DCC applications. Whilst in gaming mode, the driver ensures an outstanding experience in games, making the most of the awesome power of 50 series GPUs. 
NVIDIA also works closely with leading independent software vendors, adding new features in hundreds of DCC applications like Adobe, Autodesk and Blackmagic. This includes NVIDIA exclusive features such as ray tracing and AI acceleration. Studio also includes three unique tools, broadcast for live streaming, RTX Video, which uses AI to improve video playback, and RTX Remix, which enables you to add ray tracing and DLSS to old games. So in conclusion, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 50 series laptop GPUs based on the Blackwell architecture promise higher frame rates, especially in games that support multi-frame generation via DLSS 4 and useful new features for content creators with three models, the ultra high-end 5090, the high-end 5080 and the mid-range 5070 Ti available to pre-order from February the 25th and there'll be a lower spec 5070 planned for later. Why not let us know in the comments below which laptop GPU you're most interested in and why? And then, of course, you can follow the links in the description over to scan.co.uk to view the full range of 50 series laptops that you can pre-order from leading brands such as Asus, Razer, and, of course, our very own award-winning 3XS systems.